Welcome to Mark Arnold's Finance. Today I'm going to be covering Facebook's earnings, or shall we call them meta. Yesterday I put out a video for Microsoft and Google, or technically early this morning, because they had earnings yesterday that I reported on and put my own opinion, so be sure to watch that video. But today I want to cover meta. This company had horrible earnings last quarter, so this one overall, if I could sum it up, it's better than expected, but still nothing to brag about. So if we dive right into their earnings, we will see that with Facebook, with their earnings per share, it actually was a beat at $2.72 versus the expected $2.56. Their revenue did not beat expectations, but it still wasn't a bad miss. It came in at $27.91 billion versus the $28.2 billion expected. Now for the active users, which I think is what everyone's focused on, their daily active users did grow to 1.96 billion versus 1.95 billion, but their monthly active users dropped um, versus what they expected. So 2.94 billion versus the expected 2.97 billion. Uh, but to kind of end it with a little bit of a green uh, positive light here, their average revenue per user came in at $9.54 versus the expected $9.50. So I think with Meta, you know, we're seeing that they are actually gaining a little bit in certain areas. So it could have been a lot worse for them. I actually think this is better than I expected. I kind of was covering my eyes uh, as I was watching these earnings, but as they were revealing things, I thought, okay, this isn't a uh, worst case scenario. It's not even a bad case. It's just a decent case uh, for their earnings. So what I did like is their daily active users, which declined in fourth quarter for the first time, bounced back a bit from 1.93 billion to 1.96 billion. So that is very important. You know, they're, that's one of the biggest things I think investors are looking about, looking at is their growth in their users because this is a huge social media platform across all its different platforms and this is the one thing that will determine its future is its growth. How can it grow? Their revenue rose 7% in the quarter, making the first time in Facebook's 10-year history as a public company that growth has landed in the single single digits. Uh, analysts were expecting 7.8 growth. So, you know, with their revenue miss, I think what that shows is this company at this time is not a growth company. It's slowing down, it's having some uh, pains right now with different things. You know, there's a lot of different platforms out there. I think there's this huge, um, you know, social media bubble that is kind of popping before our eyes. You know, there's so many options right now. There's a lot of competition, but revenue, ad revenue has uh, taken a big hit. And what they said with revenue is that it kind of, the, the soft revenue that they're uh, kind of seeing right now coincided with the war in Ukraine. And I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that in a second. I kind of do agree with that. Um, but let's first look at their family of apps, which include Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp. It accounted for most of their revenue, in fact, 97.5%. The remaining 695 million came from Reality Labs, and this is where they're really trying to focus on the metaverse. So even though they had 695 million in revenue, they had a much higher loss of 2.96 billion. So, you know, definitely it's a very costly uh, route that they're going. They are making revenue, but they're spending so much more that it's coming in at a loss. Uh, so the point about Russia I want to make is uh, the other uh, social media company, uh, Snapchat, their CEO said that they're having a very challenging time, more so than expected in this first quarter. And they said that some of the advertisers had paused advertising campaigns after Russia's invasion of Ukraine in February. So this definitely is in line with probably, you know, what Facebook is experiencing. We saw uh, the Google-owned YouTube grew just 14% in the first quarter, far below the 25% that was expected. Um, so I really think with these inflationary times, I think a lot of those uh, marketing companies are really pulling back, or the marketing from these companies are really pulling back their ad spending at this time. I expect that to bounce back, but we just don't know when. So Facebook, uh, they still think they have a very strong competitive advantage when you look across the opportunities that advertisers have to advertise both offline and online with their company, and Meta is expecting 
uh, to also face tougher regulatory environment moving forward, especially with Europe, who just passed the Digital Mar Markets Act, which aims to rein in power of digital gatekeepers. So, you know, what they stated with this is they looked at the paperwork. It's not released yet with this act, but it's in line with expectations. So probably something they prepared for and can work with. Um, but it's going to be a real challenge for the whole industry. Um, we, we saw with Elon Musk buying Twitter, he's getting a lot of pushback right now from especially Europe. So they're very heavy on that regulation. Um, so that will be a challenge. So I think ad revenue and regulation is their top two biggest challenges. And then really keeping the users uh, engaged and growing and coming to their platforms and going to their other platforms. So um, what I think is, is important is Meta will slow the pace of their investments now due to their current business growth levels. So this growth, this last quarter was horrible. This quarter, you know, a little bit decent, but we're seeing some slowed growth. So uh, Mark Zuckerberg actually said, we're going to slow the pace of spending on some of our investments, AKA Metaverse. <laughs> Um, so that's not to mistake it though. There's uh, Zuckerberg is still spending billions of dollars on, you know, building devices and software for the metaverse. And this is a concept he thinks will eventually be as big as the mobile internet. Uh, so we'll see how that plays off, uh, plays out. I am bullish on the metaverse. I think this will definitely take a long time. So I'm not worried about what's going on with Meta's stock price right now. I'm really focused on how they're developing this. And right now, the Reality Labs division of Meta, which makes the Quest VR headset and you know future AR glasses, has about 17,000 employees. That's 17,000 employees focused on this metaverse, which is pretty huge. So I think Meta, Meta um, the investors in Meta and Facebook, shall you say, they're uncomfortable right now with the level of spending that's going into the metaverse, which is now forcing, I think, Mark Zuckerberg to say, we're okay, we're going to cool it off a bit. So I think that's a good thing, in my opinion, uh, to kind of maybe get investors a little bit more comfortable again, maybe buying back into this and shooting the stock up because um, they were spending $10 billion a year just on the metaverse and probably more. So to cool that off, I think will help. So in summary, in conclusion with Facebook, I am still bullish on the metaverse. I still think they have the, or they do have the largest social media user base in the whole world. So I do think that they can utilize that. I think they'll find a way to make money again, do, you know, cause they had the iOS privacy changes really hit them where people decided they didn't want to be followed by advertise, advertisers or tracked. So, you know, that way they can really target their marketing towards uh, you as a user based on what you click on and view and stuff. So that really hurt them, but I think they're going to find ways to get around that. Um, so I think that will come back their ad revenue eventually. I think the growth in their social media platforms, I think Facebook will be a very slow growth. I think Instagram will do well and WhatsApp. So I'm still positive on that route. Um, so overall, I think I'm just kind of sitting back and holding tight. I haven't bought any more stock in a while. It's down 33% in my portfolio right now. So it's definitely hurting the growth of my portfolio. Uh, but I think at the levels they're at now, I might buy a few more shares. They are expecting next quarter to still be kind of a slow growth quarter. So the, the future outlook, shall we say the short term outlook is still slow growth for Facebook. But I think long term with the metaverse, all, now keep in mind, all the big companies are getting into the metaverse, Microsoft, um, you know, Google, Amazon. These companies are taking part in some way, form or another, as well as many other companies. So I do think there's a future there. I've experienced it myself. It's pretty darn cool. And I think there's a lot of opportunities, especially with our world just getting bigger in population. Uh, there's going to definitely be a need to make things more efficient. So to be able to put on your metaverse goggles or whatever it might be in the future and just go to a store in the metaverse shop and then it get delivered to your house. You know, that's something that I think uh, things like that just got to get creative and think outside the box, but things like that will become more of the norm. So I do think there's a future. I just don't know how big it's going to be, but I think I'm bullish. So uh, I think these earnings were better than I expected. We'll put it that way. So I am happy with that, but I think it's still going to be another year or two before Facebook has that hopefully um, growth back into their advertising dollars, their platforms with their user activity. 
Uh, so that's what I have to say. Let me know what you think. I know Meta or Facebook is a very controversial stock. Um, of course, we have Elon Musk shaking things up. So I think that will have a little bit of an effect as well. We'll see. But I'm just sitting tight for now, kind of watching, observing. And I'll be putting out a few videos here and there ab about kind of my opinions and strategies with Meta and uh, with Meta slash Facebook stock. So with that said, guys, have a great day. Be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I provide uh, regular content, quality content, diverse content, and I'm very transparent. I'm growing myself, so let's grow together and become wealthy together. So with that said, have a great day. See you next time on Mark Arnold's Finance.